I think I could have set that up any more crooked than it was. Um, we turn again to the book of Psalms. I guess we're just doing the thing that we do downstairs up here for the last couple of weeks. Last week, we talked significantly about Psalm 42. We, we uh, went in depth and we talked quite a bit about spiritual depression. Now, the interesting thing about Psalm 43, where we'll be taking our, our uh, lesson from today, is that in many ways, and from what research I can come up with just uh, based on what men have written down, um, Psalm 43 is a third stanza to the same song that Psalm 42 is uh, made out of. In fact, verse 5 of Psalm 43 echoes an ending part of a stanza from verses 11 and I think it's verse 5 of Psalm 42. Um, so we have a continuation of of the ideas from Psalm 42. Now, I'm not going to bore those that were too listening uh, or, or was here with us last week too much with, but we can go into a quick review about what Psalm 42 talked about. Um, it is a song about desiring to be with God, desiring to be in His house, desiring to... Uh, to be of service in, in, in your given place for God and being unable to do it and that feeling of being spiritually alone that despite the fact that the Lord has promised he'd never leave us or forsake us that, that we sometimes feel like we're all by ourselves um, and Psalm, 40, Psalm 42 goes into pretty heavy detail with the refrain in verses 5 and 11 about sort of a, a, a self-evaluation. Why art thou cast down on my soul? This is verse 5 of 42. And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And then verse 11 echoes, because you, you kind of see a sadness in the first four verses of Psalm 42, and then you get to this sort of um, self-check in in verse 5 and then you get another dip in 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 and then verse 11 goes why art thou cast down on my soul and why art thou disquieted within me hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God and that wraps up Psalm 42, with basically um, a, a reaffirmation of why should we be depressed? Um, are we going to feel that way? Yes. Are we going to have days where we just don't um, feel the presence of God as strongly uh, due to our own problem or because of something completely out of our control? We have would you think probably 70% of our membership is not here right now? At least a solid 50. Um, and of attendance, I bet it's easily 70. Uh, and uh, they're not physically able to be here. And there's going to come some, um, or I guess should, should come some spiritual withdrawal within yourself because you're not able to commune with God's people. Um, we also stated as, as a point of reference for Psalm 42 that it was addressed to uh, the sons of Korah. Now these are not Korah from Moses' time. These are priests that were living about the same time as uh, uh, David was being on the run from Absalom. And it is, it is, it is suggested that these men were ousted from the tabernacle, probably for their support of David as king of Israel, um, and so were not physically able to take their place as Levitical priests of the house of God. Uh, and so they had this reaction, this separation that, uh, that we can see throughout 42. So that brings us to Psalm 43, which funnily enough, does not have a superscription. Now, if 42 and 43 were originally 
supposed to be a singular song, which I think they are, especially with the echo of uh, verse 5 and 43 being in the same uh, verse 5 of 42 and verse 11 of 42. Uh, it makes sense that there should be no subscription because it's the same subscription as a superscription as that we have in, um, in, in 42. Um, the first verse, and we're probably just going to read through the entire psalm and then just go back and pick up some thoughts. It is a short, short psalm, uh, clocking in at a whopping five verses. Um, but you know me, I'll figure out a way to stretch that out. Um, Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an, my, an ungodly nation. Deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou uh, cast me far off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then I will go to the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O oh God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now, if we read verse 11. Verse 5 is a verbatim. Uh, if, if you wanted to look at these as songs, which they were, uh, 5 of 42, 11 of 42, and 5 of 43 are your course. They are, they are, the, they are the, um, the ending of your stanza of music. Um, 43, I think, elaborates more on what we looked at that was talked about but more abstract. We again have a reference specifically in verse 3 to the tabernacle. Now, verse 4 alludes to this of 42. Now, we're, just, just because I, you know, we're, we're kind of looking at these two together, we're going to be switching back and forth between 42 and 43 quite a bit, so just be ready for that. Uh, uh, 40, uh, verse 4 of 42 reads, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. Now, part of the languish that you see in verses 1, 2, and 3 where he says, My soul thirsteth after God, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, my tears have been my meat. Day and night, can, uh, can, and while they continually say to me, "Where is thy God?" All of that sadness that you see in one, two, and three is predicated on the fact that these men could not get to the house of God. Verse four kind of alludes to that because it talks about going with the multitude to the house of God. Verse four of verse forty-three. Uh, no, not verse four. Uh, verse three of of uh, uh, forty-three, though, out and out says it. Send out thy light unto uh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Now we all know the temple wasn't built in. So where did they worship? They worshipped in tents, as Moses had instructed them uh, in uh, the uh, in the Pentateuch. Uh, and all of this uh, sadness. Uh, seems to be uh, 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 regarded from this separation from the house. Now, let's go back to the top of, of 43. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. There is a plea here to God to assess the situation. It says, judge me. Um, and plead my cause against an unholy nation. Then we have a cold. Now, we talked about colds a little bit in our last lesson and how that they, everything after a colon uh, is a elaboration or adds more detail to what happened before. It says, deliver me from a deceitful, from the deceitful and unjust man. Now, this, uh, <laughs> this specifically calls out a, you know, you could say a deceitful and unjust man, you could call it mankind, you could, you could get abstract with it. But if you look at this, you think about this in the context as these men were on the, on the run from Absalom, this was a specific request for a, a deceitful and unjust man to be 
uh, to be taken care of. And uh, we all know, if you've, if you've read any of the story of Absalom, deceit was his major tool. Uh, lying and, 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 and mocking up and, and, and harping up on his vanity uh, was, a, was, a, a way he, uh, was a way that he uh, got to where he was at. Um, and these men were asking for, a, uh, for God to look down, assess the situation, and provide deliverance. Now it says to, to judge me. And we could talk about we could talk about uh, you know judging is this my sin? But I actually think that this judge is supposed to be is, is supposed to be like a, a situation assessment. This is supposed to be like, hey, Lord, I'm in a bad way. And if you look at if you look at the entirety of 42, it, it, it he feels like he's in a bad way with no help, and he goes and he goes, I'm in a bad way, and I need help with this specific situation. When we pray. When we go before God to ask Him for uh, deliverance from a situation, um, we we should we should pray in specifics. Um, God delivers in specifics. He doesn't just give general uh, general. Uh, 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 I guess yeah. God can give general blessings, but all the, all all the miracles in the Bible are specific to situations. The woman with the issue of blood, from what. We understand about it. She had a very, very specific disease. She had a very specific request, and she went to the Lord with that very specific request, and she grabbed hold of the hem of the garment and got healing for a very, very specific thing. When we, 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 especially when we're in congregation, because I think we're embarrassed, which we shouldn't be, uh, but. I will put this as an aside. A lot of other Christians give us reasons to feel embarrassment for those things. This is, you know, and I, you know we don't want to point fingers too much at, at anybody. But if, if, if when someone confesses sin and they get ridiculed for it or they get the side eye for it, every, every, you know, from, from, from then on, uh, what, what impetus do they have to share it with the people of God again? But when we're in a corporate worship scenario and we have something that's laying heavy upon our heart, it needs to be specific. It doesn't need to say, would, would y'all just please pray for me? I have stuff going on in my life. Well, I mean, I can just say Brother Jarrett asked a ask, ask request for that. In that manner, I, could, I, I will pray with Brother Jarrett for, for whatever stuff is going on in his life. But how much more specific could I get with the Lord? It says, help th these things for Brother Jarrett. Help him, help, help him in these specific scenarios that he, that he is going in right now. Uh, intervene on these things in particular. Uh, and I think the Bible is full of, of examples of where it's like, remember uh, Joshua on the battlefield. And he, specific, he needed more daylight. He literally needed more time to defeat his enemies. And what did he say? He said, Lord, please, did, he, did he go, Lord, please help us in this situation. Help us defeat these guys. That'd be that sort of a general request. That's what he was wanting. He was, he was wanting help. No, Joshua knew what he needed. He said, I need more daylight. And he, and he requested that the celestial bodies just hold their place and so that he could have more time to do what he needed to do. And the Lord granted that request. Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 when Elijah was on the mount with the 400 prophets of Baal, do you see him say, Lord, would you please perform a miracle and really give it to these people of Baal in Jesus' name? Amen. No, you don't really see that. He, he, knew, he knew what he wanted. He wanted fire to come down from heaven. And he was so certain that fire was going to come after him when he, when he, when he began calling for it that he made sure that there was enough water on there that there, there, uh, there wasn't a brush fire in the world that could set it on fire. And then when he called for it, he called for fire specifically. He called for, he called for God to show these people in flame what he could do. And he got an answer for the request. So when we go before the Lord, we need to be specific with our request. And I believe in the first part of the first you got, for, uh, for thou art the God of my strength, why dost thou cast me off? Why go, why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. He goes in verse 2, and it's almost accusative. Verse 2 says, For thou art the God of my strength. 
Very simple statement. But there's an elaboration on this where he goes, why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? We talked a lot about uh, spiritual depression in uh, our last lesson. And this is another low point for these people. He is He's requesting help. He know, uh, I mean, these were priests of God, by from what little bit of study that I can I can get out of this, uh, they know of the power of God. We have a conceptual idea of how God works, of how powerful our God is. Uh, you know, if I was to ask uh, 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 Sister Heather or, or Sister Sarah or Brother Jarrett, uh, who created the world, um, I would hope. <laughs> that y'all that y'all would come out with uh, some accounting of what we have in Genesis, and I feel like I would be fairly fairly confident in in, in getting those answers. Um, and we understand that the Lord has the power to just speak things into being. He has the power to part red seas. These are these, these are lessons, by the way, we learn in Sunday school. We we learn at a very early age about massive displays of God's power, right? And yet, it seems abstract to us, and maybe partially why we are so depressed and we, all, we, we feel so helpless is because think, you know, believing something in the abstract or believe, believing, believing just with your head or, 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 or knowing that those things exist but not believing they can still exist can, can, can lead to a lot. You know, if, if, if you feel like you're praying to a wall, with no ability to come back and help you again, you know, I'm I'm just gonna, uh, you know, uh, uh, take my 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 burdens over there. I'm gonna talk about them for a little bit with, you know, in some some cases we act like with ourselves, and then I'm gonna pick them up again and I'm gonna walk away with them. Well, of course you're gonna feel like God's not there. It, uh, of course, of course, and, and I think verse two kind of displays this dichotomy. We are aware of the strength of God, but we feel like that he's not there. Now, this can be for a multitude of reasons. This can be your fault. Oftentimes, I, I don't know in this specific scenario, uh, uh, oftentimes, it, it, you know, um, it, it, it is, we, we have, we've done something to offend God. Um, but it could just be a timing thing. God's not ready to work. He's just not ready to do it right now. It's not in his time. We, uh, you know, a lot of times when we when we pray, we say we say, "If it be thy will." Do we really mean that? Is it his will? You know, uh, uh, this morning I got a, I got a message from Dad. Uh, Brother Junior is wanting uh, the, the the as many of the men in the church as will to go over and pray for him and and, and, and anoint his head, uh, but. In our prayer, no doubt, there's going to be, if, if it be your will, take this way. It, what if it's not? What if it's not his will to fix the situation? Are, are we okay with that? Or are we going to be like verse 2 of a uh, uh, song and feel like that God has cast us aside? That, God, that, 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 uh, that, that, that we're being oppressed of the enemy even though God's got all this strength? Sometimes it's just not in his will to help right now or at all. Sometimes a greater work can be wrought by God just not intervening at all. You know, I bet there were a lot of people that prayed deliverance when the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Persians all came and, and decimated Israel and scattered the populace out across a dozen countries. I'm sure there was a lot of praying and crying. And you know what? God didn't lift a finger to help them. In a few situations, he helped singular people in specific scenarios. You got Daniel, you got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You got Nehemiah, Ezra. But when the Assyrians were gouging eyes out and killing men, beheading them, you don't see help coming in that. When the Babylonians came down, no deliverance from God there. 
when the finger roll on the wall and then the Pope Persian showed up, you don't just see all of a sudden things drastically changing for the children of Israel. Hey, we're a country again. The Babylonians are gone. No, that's not how that worked out either. Did they become a country again? Yeah, actually, Nehemiah and Ezra is, is kind of an accounting of them sort of making their way back home. That was like a, a gen, generations <laughs> past when all the initial stuff happened. So sometimes God's just not going to jump when you say how high, and it's going to seem like he has cast you off and he's far away from you and he's not there to help you and la de la de la And we can get in our own heads and get our depressed. Is, is God even real? Is, 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 does he even care about our situations? Verse 3, O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. He feels the distance and maybe perhaps a lack of deliverance. And what is his request? Just guide me back to where I'm supposed to be. The Lord creates us for a purpose, does He not? For Brother Jarrett, it was it was preaching. Uh, for for me, it was it was it was it was teaching. We have multitude of other talents for Sister Sarah. She she can she can play. We 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 have we have we have, we just in this sparse number of people, we have we have ability, and we have we have we have. We have a, a, a talent. Sarah said, Sister Heather's really good at painting. <laughs> uh, we, have, we, have, we have things that we're designed to do that, that we're good at. Just naturally, it just comes to you. Probably didn't come to you right away, did it, Brother really, really Jerry? But when the Lord called you to preach, there probably wasn't anything else you could do with yourself, right? When I, when I first te taught, <laughs> But you just do it. it but it's because it's what you were designed. It's what you were made for. It doesn't mean you weren't scared. It doesn't mean you weren't. You weren't. Uh, you weren't. Uh, but there's nothing else you can do. And these men were asking for the ability to get back to the place that they were supposed to be in the job they were supposed to be in. Now, this is a great appeal to the Lord. If we're making appeals to God, asking Him to put us back where He designed us to be is a great appeal, because. He wants you to be there. Does he not? If, 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 if I'm the great designer of the universe and I set all these things in motion, would I not want every piece to be where they're supposed to be? Sometimes our appeal is the problem. Help me because I want it. Not a great appeal. Gracie comes to me and ask me for, for something from the dollar store, why do you want it? And she can't really tell me why she wants it? Well, that's not a great appeal. I'm, I, my, my immediate thought is, well, this is something you want, and it's probably going to be in the floorboard of the car before we get home, and I've wasted my money, and you've wasted your time. Because I want to is not always a great appeal. When we make these appeals to the Lord, we should think of them in God's terms, which is very difficult for us to do because we're in pain. I want out of pain now. That is, that's, that's where our brain immediately goes, right? But that's not how God sees the situation. Remember, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. You know, He has his own, uh, his, his own way of thinking about things. And, and, and in terms of service, is definitely a way that God thinks. You can see a lot of that in the Scripture, a lot of stuff in the New Testament about service. Then I will go to the altar of God, unto my God, exceeding, unto my God, exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise Thee, O God, my God. Now, there is an implicit promise here it's, it's almost like a contractual thing that we've got going on here. If God delivers, what will the priest do? I'm going to go back and do my duty. I will go unto the altar of God. Brother Jarrett, he did quite a bit of study. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel and we're not aware, there is a 
It's 13 parts, right, Jerry? <laughs> a 13 part series. I've forgotten now. A 13 part series on our YouTube channel about the sacrifices in the Old and New Testament. And a lot of that revolved around brazen altar, the Ark of the Covenant, which was an altar in its own right. Uh, and and the, the types of sacrifices that were being off, off, offered on there. And largely, especially when you look at Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, a lot of that was relegated to the priest. And what these men were saying is, if you will bring me back, if you will guide me back, if you will, if you will help me get back where I belong, in turn, I will offer the service. If, if you put me back in the place that I'm supposed to be, I will fulfill the job that I'm supposed to do. That is the promise of verse 4. There's, um, there's zeal that you can feel in verse 4. I will go unto the altar of my God, unto my God, exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp I will, will I praise thee, O God, my God. You can see elation. Not only do we, does he want to be back where he's supposed to be, and if the Lord will get him back where he's supposed to be, will he do his job? He's going to do it with zeal and fervor and joy. He's not going to feel like he's being, he's being browbeat to have to, to have to do the things that God wants him to do. It's going to, it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to be a, a joyous occasion to be in the service of God. And then we have this gut check again in verse 5, which we've already kind of read. We'll go through one more time. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. For yet, for, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Faith. Verse, verse 5 is this gut check. Why are you cast down? Let's, let's, let's see. Why, why am I in the spiritual depression? And what is the solution? Hope in God. Faith. We've made the appeal to God. We've told God how we feel. And if you look at verse, chapters 42 and 43 together, we've made the appeal three separate times. After, from verses, if you look at 42, 1 through 5, does God immediately solve the scenario? No, because we have six more verses left in the chapter. From verses 6 to 11 of 42, does God automatic, automatically solve the issue? No, because we have an entire other uh, uh, man-made chapter here that addresses the same issues. Sometimes it's not going to be immediate, but, but our faith is key and important. And I think that's why that you know this, this hope in God is repeated over and over and over. Why are you disquieted? Why are you cast down? Why, why are you feeling the way that you're feeling? Hoping God. Have a little faith, people. Bolster yourself up. It's great whenever I can say, Brother Jarrett, I'm praying for you. I think you're doing a great job. You probably can feel some, some, some spiritual bolstering from other people giving you that Exhortation. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes there's just not going to be anybody around to help you with that. And in those moments, hope in God. We have a lot of sick people out here, and I would say this building's probably not going to be full again with all of our people for a while yet. And there, you know, Ed, when I initially, I didn't, because I, I thought Jared was going to be over at Julian this week. My initial plan was it just going to be me and my wife and my two kids. It was going to be even more smart than it is now. Praise God, Jared was able to be here because it was going to be it's going to be short and sweet today. Um, but it's going to be a while yet, and, and we can't not you know I'm not sick. My place is here teaching at the church, and I have to have faith that this is the role. That we're supposed to be in. And, and you know what? For everybody at home that's sick, that doesn't know if they're going to be able to make it out of it, have a little faith. God will take care of that situation in his own good time to the extent of his own goodwill. And that's all there is to it. 